As we come to the close of our developmental psychology unit, I want to take a look at one more theory. Uh, it's by a guy by the name of Daniel Levinson, uh, and he called it his Seasons of Life theory. Uh, now, uh, Seasons of Life always reminds me of uh, one of my favorite Broadway musicals, which is Rent. Uh, and so if you were alive and in person today, uh, we would start with uh, Seasons of Life being played from Rent. Now, they made a movie of Rent, uh, which is okay. Uh, didn't think it was as impactful as uh, the Broadway show. Uh, but I will go ahead and put that up on YouTube if you want to hear the song. Uh, but Seasons of Life, really pretty song uh, from Rent. But we're just going to skip that right now. We're going to go to this slide with Daniel Levinson. So this book comes out in 1978. And he was very interested in development after adolescence. So with Piaget and Erickson and Kohlberg, um, a lot of the emphasis was put on those early stages of development. Levinson doesn't talk about that stuff at all. He uh, picks up, uh, you're going to see some similarities with Erickson with the, the identity and, and role confusion um, stage of uh, Erickson as we get started. Levinson puts those a little later, um, but Levinson really starts as you're starting to transition from um, from being a child to being an adult, uh, you know, out on your own, going to college, getting a job, starting a family, that sort of thing. Uh, he did this. He had uh, performed 40 kind of in-depth interviews uh, with men between the ages of 35 and 45, and talked with them about their background, their education, um, the the process of, of getting jobs, big life events that they had, or was there anything that uh, for them really helped them or guided them along the way? Were there uh, certain things that were uh, good or bad turning points uh, that these guys are going to have to deal with? And so uh, he interviews these guys. Um, for the most part, this structure is true for both men and women. Uh, Levinson's theory uh, he, he does uh, eventually do some interviews with women uh, and just says the timing's a little different uh, because uh, motherhood, child rearing, that kind of stuff for a good number of women uh, that he was interviewing uh, interfered with uh, kind of some of the natural progression. Uh, he viewed men as, uh, you know, basically going to work their entire adult lives, but, but, you know, ladies, if they're having kids, uh, getting married, doing those sorts of things. Maybe there are breaks uh, in that uh, that work period. Some of this stuff obviously is a little different when we look back in the 2020s here, uh, and we kind of say, well, "Hey, uh, how does this stuff apply?" Uh, you know, for instance, you know, people get married later today than they they used to even 30 years ago, right? You look at uh, around the time I was born in, in the early 1980s, average age for men to get married, I think, was like 24 or 25. Uh, for women, it was 22. Uh, you look today, and that's 29 and 27. Uh, so that has been pushed, uh, you know, quite a bit uh, in the last 40 years or so. Uh, and so that, that's the kind of stuff you got to take into consideration uh, when you're looking at, um, at, at something like a, a theory like this. So in Levinson's model, what you're going to see, and i got a little picture for you, for you uh, on the screen, is that there are what he called stable periods. And so the stable periods are the ones that are going straight up. Uh, and then he had what he called transitional periods. And so those are the ones that are going side to side. Uh, and so in the stable periods, he said this is when we're making crucial life choices. Uh, we take those choices and then we build a structure around them. So if you decide to get a particular job or you decide to start a family, uh, those sorts of things, and you have to change your life structure uh, to fit uh, those specific, uh, specific needs. Uh, and then the idea is that inside of that life structure, then we have goals that we're going to pursue. Then when you come around, you can see it. There's, there's uh, you know, kind of one in the, the early 20s there. Uh, that's going to get us started. There's one in the mid 40s uh, where you're going to have a transitional period, and that is where one stage of your life ends, so that kind of that upper progress, and then you're going to shift to uh, the next one. 
And that's uh, that shift could take years, right? Because you're coming out of one kind of model and set, and you're going into another one. So say you are, um, you, you know, you get to be, you know, the the age I am now. You get to be, uh, you know, 43, 44, 45. In a, in a couple of years, uh, our son will be uh, transitioning to to go to college. Uh, and you know, get a job and and you know, get some independence. And so, for Amanda and I, what that'll mean is there's a period of time there where we're going to go from the parents of of having a, a child in the house uh, to uh, parents with what they call an, an empty nest. Uh, you know, basically this idea that uh, we're going to have to transition from the the daily activities of of being a parent who has to be very involved in the day to day life of their child uh, to a different role. And we're going to have to take so that would be an example of one of those uh, transition periods that's there. Uh, so he's got five stages. Uh, Pre-adulthood stage he doesn't talk a whole lot about. That's zero to twenty-two, uh, and you'll see there's some overlap, and that's those transition stages. So early adult stage, uh, adulthood stage, we'll talk about middle, late, uh, and then late, late adult stage. So not real creative naming, I guess there uh, at the uh, the end, but. I guess he figures you get to be 80, uh, who's supposed to tell you what to do, right? Uh, so the early adult transitional period, uh, this is what Erickson would call identity crisis and role confusion. So this is figuring out, uh, kind of starting to become your own person. Who are you going to be? Uh, this should be very familiar for those of you that are listening to this, because this is where uh, Levinson would put you uh, on that scale. For an awful lot of you, in a year or two, uh, you are going to be uh, transitioning into the workforce uh, or college or the military or one of those wonderful pathways we talk about uh, all the time at Scottsburg High School. And as that happens, uh, you gain more independence, uh, you leave home, and so it's kind of the end of your adolescence and the beginning of your adulthood. So for the next several years, right, you're going to be uh, transitioning and moving in that direction. So you're not expected to instantly go from one to the other, uh, but it's it's kind of a gradual thing as you start to figure it out, and you're just moving to a new phase uh, of life. Uh, so in the early adult stage, this is kind of where you're going to be picking a role, right? What you want to do, uh, what role are you going to fill in society? Uh, this could be uh, you know, the time where you are coming up with a career and you're establishing some career goals. Uh, this could be a time where you start looking and saying, hey, I uh, want to start dating more seriously because I would like to get married and have a family. Uh, really, the, you know, there, there are a myriad of choices uh, that someone could, uh, could have in something like this. But, but the idea here is just uh, picking out uh, the role uh, that you're going to go for and then kind of setting some goals. Uh, what, uh, where would you like to be when, right? So I'd want to be here by the time I'm 25, and I want to have this by the time I'm 30. Er, um, Levinson, uh, as he's talking, talks about the importance of finding a mentor, or as I call it here on the screen, because you know I can't do anything without a Star Wars reference, finding your Yoda, right? This person that's going to help you uh, accomplish uh, these goals. And that could be a workplace mentor. That could be somebody that's a little older than you, that's um, a little more advanced in the family stages of life, that sort of thing that's helping you uh, to find uh, those sorts of things. If you remember uh, back to reading The Great Gatsby, right? This is finding your Dan Cody, uh, as it were. So, you know, somebody that's going to help you along the path uh, that, uh, that you've chosen. Uh, the next transition, he said, happens around age 30. Uh, and age 30, we, we look back, right? We look back on those 20s uh, and we say, this worked and this didn't. Um, and part of that is looking at flaws in those plans and those goals we set. Part of it may be looking at flaws in ourselves, right? Limitations that we've got uh, and kind of readjusting those goals uh, to be a little more realistic, uh, you know, maybe you wanted to make partner in a law firm by the time you were 30, um, but that didn't turn out to be the type of law that you wanted to practice. Uh, you didn't like the the grind and what was going on there, and so you, you chose to go in a different direction, right? Uh, and so that would be, you know, just a time where you could decide, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna do this. I'm going to readjust those goals. Instead of wanting to, to be a partner in a big firm, I, I'd like to do... 
uh, you know, my own family practice uh, instead, something like that. Uh, you're establishing a role here, uh, probably in a family, probably in a career uh, by this point, and that balance uh, can be a big deal. When Levinson's doing this theory, there's honestly not still not a lot of pressure on guys to have as much work-family balance as it was for women. I think you could argue today uh, that that is not the case, uh, that uh, regardless of gender, we kind of strive for uh, a balance between family and work. Uh, and and to understand we're giving our, giving our best to both. Uh, the next stage is the boom stage or becoming one's own man. Uh, and this is where uh, you kind of look at the rules and if there are things that uh, you don't like, you kind of start to push back against them. John Mellencamp famously saying, when I fight authority, uh, authority always wins. Well, this is where you don't want authority to win. Uh, you push back on kind of what you're being told to do. Could be at work, could be at family, however, uh, and you kind of are forging your own path uh, a little bit. Now, that's going to mean you have to have more responsibility. It's a greater burden on you as a person, uh, but this represents an opportunity to break out of a structure that may have been a little more expected of you uh, into something that instead is going to be able to work for you uh, in a particular uh, way. Uh, the midlife transition uh, is what's going to happen there in the mid-40s. Um, this is where you kind of ask yourself a couple of things. Do I like the path I'm on? Uh, is this something I want to keep doing? Uh, about this time you look, and for most people you'd say, well, I've worked 20 years. I've got another 20 years uh, to do this. Do I like where I'm at? Um, or is it time to make a change? Uh, do I want to keep my life structured? Kind of the famous thing that comes out of this is the idea of a midlife crisis. In television and movies, we get this idea a lot of times that everybody has a midlife crisis. And that's not, uh, that's not the case, but it is the case that um, the, these questions can lead some people to have uh, really kind of a crisis. They look and just really don't like the way you know the direction life's going or they're not happy with what's happening. But you kind of look and say, man, I got 20, you know, 15, 20 years invested in this. How do I just throw it away? Uh, and so that can lead to some angst uh, for, uh, for some folks that, uh, that would be there in, in the midlife transition. Um, so as we um, look at this, um, like I said, for, for Levinson, he, he looked at it a little bit differently for, for females. And so this chart um, that, that he put here is... Um, is a little more uh, female driven. You can see that um, there are uh, just a couple of kind of subtle differences in what's going on between uh, men and women. For the most part, though, uh, with women, he said, you're going to follow the same steps. It just may not be the same timing uh, that uh, that you're seeing in uh, the uh you know, kind of the progression through these stages. Uh, and then I finished up with uh, the ending of Michael Scott's tenure at the office where they sing Seasons of Life to him, but they put in stuff from the show. Uh, and Steve Carell cries, and it makes me want to cry. And so I'm not going to show that either, but I'll put that video uh, up there on YouTube. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into Levinson's uh, Seasons of Life theory, and we'll see you next time.